Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is OXCV. On today's video, I'm here to do my highly, and when I mean highly, I really, really mean highly requested how to build a base video. So I've been preparing my thoughts for quite a few days, basically after I summoned on KCM Naruto, and uh, I've been taking like a mental break from the entire traumatic experience. You already know what happened. Um, Let's just move on from that point in my life anyway. So I have been gathering my thoughts together, preparing what to say, preparing what to talk about now. Now this is going to be a very in-depth video, probably going to be like a good 20 to 25, maybe even 30 minutes. So uh, before we get started, y'all, like y'all might want to grab a drink, maybe a snack or something like that to keep y'all occupied while you watch this because I will have a lot of information to share, in my opinion, how to build a great base, like all my tips and tricks, all of the things that have to be discussed. I'm going to cut, I'm going to put this video into four parts, like four segments. So the first segment will be the first room, how you should set up your first room, what to do, how to exactly uh, place whatever trap, etc, etc. I'm going to talk about how to build rooms around specific shinobi, the ones that I, I believe are the highest uh, like the highly recommended uh, base defenders to use. I'm going to talk about how to build a room around them. And then I'm also going to talk about uh, final room solutions and also like uh, just any traps and things like that, what to use, how to set them up. Also, y'all, uh, I cannot stress this enough that um, just wait till the end, like near the final room area. I have this awesome, awesome setup that I will show you guys. I think it's really, really amazing it's my favorite thing that I, I i showed you guys in this entire video i think it's the most unique one it's the most interesting one it's one that i don't think anyone has talked about so for real y'all hit a big thumbs up and wait patiently for that part because when i tell you guys that it's amazing i for real mean that it's amazing so y'all um before we get started please hit a big thumbs up to show some support of um all my efforts and everything like that to make this video because uh, y'all trust me this is gonna be a big one and also if you're new to my channel please hit that subscribe button and then let's just go ahead and get started all right y'all so the first thing we're gonna talk about is which terrain to use so the current terrain that i have is uh terrain 16 rank 5 now the reason why I choose uh, the reason why I chose this one is because uh, overall um, the enemy who's attacking my base currently is kind of forced to go into almost every single room that I have. You really want a base like that? Um, yeah, anyone, anything that's sort of like this that has all the rooms. Like you see the starting point right there. Like you can't go left, you can't go up. You have to go right, then you have to go up, and then so on, so on, so on. So you want to set up your base in a way that the people can't just skip out rooms because that, that will happen and it's not good. It's not a good thing to do. So yeah, I have terrain set 16. Let's see which other ones would work. Uh, I wouldn't choose something like this. It's, you want more rooms. It depends what you guys want. So there are two types of bases you can really, really build. You have a timeout base. You have a base where like uh, the focus is on your enemy. Uh, um, the focus is on your base defenders and how fast they can kill your enemy or a combination of both my personal favorite one is a combination of both i like to have a little bit of a time consuming and also a base where my base defenders are op so yeah really a terrain that's something like um this one right here um this could work i don't prefer ones like this because um yeah it's just I, I don't know i really like this one all right so uh terrain set 18 does work i like this base a lot you can work around this one um yeah so 16 18 17 could work but depends how you build it up uh, as we go on you guys will see um 19 kind of works yeah 19 is pretty good i like 19 terrain set 20 um this one's okay not my favorite so really 19 18 and 16 those are my favorite ones to build around but you can choose whichever you guys feel like so it doesn't really really matter too too much all right so the, we already talked about the first thing now we're gonna move on to the second thing which is the first room of your base now this is my setup right here i am using some bear traps a few tornado traps and also a uh tornado trap number two which can actually fly the enemy to another room so the reason why i have this exact setup i'm gonna explain this really really carefully so now because of the new things that has changed paper bombs and bear traps aren't the better um traps as of now however it's still important that you use a few 
just to uh, make the enemy have a time-consuming moment, something like that, because um, even though they're easily breakable now, you still want to have them there just to have them a little bit pushed back so it can go to your advantage. Now, you don't want to go Bear Trap or Paper Bomb Heavy, because first of all, uh, they don't really take down a lot of damage. Second, it's easy to avoid them with a Teleport character uh, or even with Hokage Naruto. And also, we have healers, you know, like... Paper bombs aren't generally going to kill your enemy. It's just really to make them um, kind of like crouch and stumble so that they can't move forward. Now, one thing that's really, really important that I don't think everyone knows is to put a pot like this somewhere behind a um, some type. Yes, to put a pot like this somewhere that's close to your big tornado trap. The reason why is that as soon as you enter a room, um, your teammate shinobis will automatically... Uh, start running to that little pot to hit it like the enemy opponent will automatically run to that and they will want to go to that So because of that and then you have a train trap right there They will get separated now. That's my favorite thing The first room is to make your enemy team separated That's the most important thing and I'll show you guys how that plays out now Another thing is that tornado traps have to be carefully placed mine is placed right here for one reason and one reason only you guys see the arrows so you place it there and this will allow the enemy team to either fly forward to the right or to the left now it doesn't it does matter where you put the tornado trap if you would put it here they couldn't fly to this room this one right here they could fly here there or there but they can't fly there so you really have to carefully place your tornado trap the one that can actually launch people because that's very very crucial now i can't really exactly tell you where to place it. you have to figure it out on your own but play around with that now, I discussed kind of a lot of things right here. I'm going to show you guys my first room and how it plays out. So, let's go into a test play. And I'm going to go in with my Hokage Naruto, Tsunade, Shisui, and let's see here. Uh, let's just choose the MS Sasuke because why not? Now, I'm going to show you guys really how this all plays out together and why it's important to have everything set up sort of like mine. Um, like, the bear trap right here is to let this happen. You see, I get caught there. My teammates will go towards the big tornado trap and they got separated and that means well that means business so i had little tornado traps right there just to make me more confused i had bear traps i had a seal so that my enemy team can't use um chakra and look at that see how separation is already important my entire team just died like that let's do that again now this is how my base is up you guys saw that right you guys really saw how my entire team really just died so fast as soon as I like allowed them to separate so let's try it again once again bear trap I get stopped my team starts flying forward they got sealed they can't do to chakra I tried to go in I got blown away now they will follow me they will end up following me so that isn't always guaranteed however in this case right now didn't get flown away so it's not a perfect solution it's not perfect but either way it still allowed me to consume some time so as you guys just saw, it's not 100% foolproof, however, it's still pretty good enough and you don't have to copy this exactly for you guys need to uh, somehow implement your own style, your own playing style. I'm just giving you guys all tips and tricks of what you guys can do to make a better base. So let's try that again and I'm gonna explain a little bit more each thing what they do. So the bear trap initially right there for me is to stop my enemy team from going forward so that their teammates can go towards this lucky pot and then get blown away by the tornado trap and get separated. I love separating my enemy team because it allows them to die faster, which also allows the main player to die faster without a healer or without their support characters. So yeah, that's all great. The paper bombs are used for the same exact thing just to stop them a little bit. This little tornado trap right there, it's also the same exact reason. So they get blown away and their teammate follows them or whatever, something like that. So along those lines, this all works out. The reason why I have a seal scroll there is so that it allows either the main character or his or his teammates to stop using their jutsus. That allows them to get blown away and they won't be able to kill my base defender as fast. So let's try that again. And um, yeah, let's just go for it. All right, let's see what this can do. Now, of course... Uh, a lot of people will just activate traps. So as a Hokage Naruto play right now, I'm going to activate the traps and see what happens. All right, so I didn't activate all traps. I'm playing as if someone's entering my own base right now. My team just got separated. My team just got separated. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go and try to find them. So 
yeah, something like that could happen. Very, very easily. Now, this is why it's important to get the team separated. As you guys just saw, this will end up happening. This will end up happening, and this is why it's really, really important. Now, of course, this also ties into the, um, the part where I'm going to talk about the base defenders, but we'll get into that a little later. Now, the next thing I'm going to talk about right here are rooms that do not include base defenders. So that would be rooms like this that are traps only. Rooms like this where there are a few, um, like those little shinobi that can protect you or whatever. That's just to waste time. And rooms, um, yeah, I really only have three rooms like that. So this one, that one, and the final room area. Now, I have another trick for the final room area. We will get into that a little later. So uh, that one's actually, I like to leave a little bit even better. So yeah, we'll just get into that a little later. All right, so I'm going to teach you guys how to place these three traps. So once again, the way these tornado traps are panned out for me are for a few, uh, in a few ways. So this first two tornado traps right here. So this one will either send my enemy flying into that room or that room, back to where he be, uh, back to where he came from. The reason that's there is to waste time. This one can potentially shoot them either back, forward, or to the left. So that's all great. Now, if the person who's fighting my base doesn't remember where the next shinobi is, they will end up going into this room. And now, this right here, this setup, is just to make them waste more time, just to use some juices, just to use some chocolate, just to uh, mess them up a little bit. Now, this won't do any damage, this is just to waste time. These paper bombs right there really aren't for damage, just so that they can waste more time. So that's in my head. Mine is a slash, uh, mine's a half OP base defender, half timeout. So that's how my base is set up. Now these grenades right here, these are just so that they will fly to my base defender right here, which is OG Naruto. And the reason why I have a train trap right there, so that they'll be confused and my Naruto will just one shot them. That's my purpose for that trap right there. And let's show how that plays out. All right, so I'm gonna try my best to activate all the traps right here. Now, I'm gonna try to play as someone who doesn't know their base like the back of their hands because I know my base. I know exactly where everything is. I know where all the traps are. So I really am trying to play like I don't know my own base and what I would do. So I would activate my traps right here. Now, this is the thing. Now, it depends who you're with. If you're not with Hokage Naruto, you will not activate traps. There's like a really, really slim chance. So let's say I'm not with Hokage Naruto and I get into that tornado trap. I got flown away to my OG Naruto. I am trapped, I cannot get out. So what that leaves me with is having to fight my Naruto. Now let's just ignore that because I'm not trying to do that right now. So uh, I'll give a cut with that. All right, so I defeat my Naruto. Now I'm gonna show you guys what those other traps can do. See, I walk back into one. I get blown back, wasting more time, wasting more time. So let's just say this is my first time walking into this room and I don't know where the enemy is. Let's say, uh, subconsciously, I start walking forward, um, nothing activated. I don't know why, there you go. See, it's just to waste time. Tornado traps, now, I don't know if you guys know, but the brown tornado traps, the little ones, they keep you in the same room. The ones that are black and red, like, um, no, that one keeps you in the room. The other one actually blows you away somewhere else. So that's very important to know, because I see a lot of people using the blow away tornado traps where there's an enemy in that same room. You do not want to do that. You're just wasting that tornado trap. The only time you're allowed to use that is if you're out of the brown ones, like the little tornado traps, and then you need a tornado trap right there. Then you can go ahead and use it, but otherwise do not do that. You will not use the purpose that it's intended to do. So that kind of covers uh, those two rooms. Now I'm going to talk about some other options you guys can do right now. Now another option for a stall room, as I like to call them, a room that doesn't have a base defender, is a setup that's something like this, including this new trap. I actually really, really like this. I prefer this over the electric needle and things like that because it takes down way more damage and it keeps rebuilding itself and the explosion time is a lot faster. So this is a setup. I'll show you guys how this plays out. And um, you can try some other traps which you guys think would work, but um, I really, really like these two setups right here. You either use tornado traps to separate your uh, your enemy team even more, or you do something like this that will cause decent amount of damage and just stall more time. So the two type of rooms that I really, really like to use for stall rooms are hallway ones and open rooms. Those are the ones I think that work. Um, those are the ones I think work the best. And uh, yeah, I'll just show you guys the setup like this and yeah. All right, so I made it into that room and let's start heading towards that trap. So you guys will see right here that I will get a little stalled. I get blown away, things like that. So yeah, I did two, deal like 7,000 damage. Now think about it this way. 
my room right here, I'll show you guys once I leave it. So the reason why I like that setup right there. So think about it this way. Now, normally I would have Madara set up right there just for an extra base defender. But even if you, um, this would be in a different setup, uh, base setup that um, doesn't require to have this hallway room. Um, you would use this setup right here and I'll explain why that trap is so good and why it works. So think about it this way. This room right here is after all of my base defenders. So that means they would have to walk into all of the rooms. They would have low health. Maybe their healer died. Then they jump into this room. This trap right here will deal 7,000 damage to them and it might potentially kill them depending on how much HP they have. So that's why I love this setup with this trap. You could use the poison snake. I just really like this one better because it's a one-time deal, quick, good damage, and yeah, you could potentially kill someone on your enemy team. So that's why I love that type of setup. So I think that covered rooms that do not have a base defender. And now we're gonna hop into the part of a base that I think is very, very crucial, which is the base defenders themselves. Now it's time to talk about one of the most crucial parts of a base, which are the base defenders and the setup that surrounds them. So I'm gonna go through each of my setups. So this is one of them. This is another one. This will be one with a revival porter and I'll explain why there's basically almost nothing there and who it's for. This is another one where there's two bear traps right here. There is um, the regular porter and this trap, y'all. If you do not have this trap, I feel really, really bad for you. This was obtainable from a mission. Now, this is hands down my favorite trap in the entire game uh, in terms of your own base, but it's also the most annoying one to be up against. Of course, that's why it's my favorite. Now, this is another setup I have right here for Madara. And uh, there's other units that you could use right here, but uh, I just have Mother right there and I'll explain those a little bit later. So I'm gonna talk about like each room, who to use it and what type of setup they need. And yeah, let's just go right in. So I'm gonna start with my first room. So this room is very carefully planned out with a hallway one, very proportionally planned out um, bear traps so that the enemy cannot escape, a few seal scrolls, and uh, these two pots right here. Now, I love these pots because they give your base defender such a big boost that I think it's very, very necessary. And uh, yeah, so let's just talk about what type of unit could be used in a room like this. So, I personally have Shikamaru set up right here. I have Shikamaru because um, I really like, even though damage over time is kind of nerfed, the way I have my base set up is that most of the times the enemy will get separated so their healer their healer will be in another room. So probably the main character will have to be right here. And when they encounter Shikamaru, I have my bear trap set up that even if they would decide to run away, if they run towards the uh, right side of the hallway, which is normally what people choose, they would get bear trapped and Shikamaru would use their ultimate ride away. So that's why I love Shikamaru over Deidara because not only Shikamaru uses... Um, a damage over time just like the other but he can also cast seal on the enemy for such a long time which is very very annoying so seal and paralysis yeah it's very very annoying and uh other people that you could use in this room so aside from shikamaru would uh be i'd recommend someone like maybe kabuto maybe tachi version one uh i think he works better in another room later down the road but yeah, i think shikamaru kabuto damage over time people like that that needs to be stuck in one place those are the type of people i recommend so shikamaru uh, Kabuto once again, they, there are things like that. People who really, really should stick to one room. And I'll show you guys how that all plays out. So let's use my boy Shikamaru. And yeah, let's just hop right into it. I'm gonna go in solo, just to uh, show you guys what would happen if my team got separated and etc etc so let's hop right into that room. Now, of course, I know where all the traps are because I'm the one who built my own base. So I'm gonna try to play like someone who doesn't know. Let's say I walk into this room and I get bear trap right there. Now, I got paralyzed right there and Shikamaru just did his ult. So I got bear trap and that's basically it. Like I will maybe end up surviving if I'm lucky enough, but even then my health would be so low that if I don't have my healer with me, I will end up dying. Like it, it, that's why I really, really, really like the setup. Alex, show you guys more scenarios. Uh, like just in case I don't hop right into just that trap what would happen it would have the same outcome but uh, I'll just show you guys anyways. all right so I made it to the room with my boy Shikamaru and then same thing happens yeah I went into a different bear trap um, same thing happened really really the same thing happened now I want to show you guys what would happen if I wouldn't end up in a bear trap how would Shikamaru catch me now that's where it gets a little tricky so of course no 
uh, room or base defenders on the field. I strongly believe in that, and you guys should too. So let's say um, someone just avoids my bear traps completely. What would happen? Well, something like this would happen. Now, this is a risk I'm willing to take because I do not know what would happen, like where the enemy team would go. I just predict it. But even so, Shukumaru has paralyzing. I have that equipped. And then he does his damage over time old. So either way, it's almost the same outcome. It depends what you do. Now, of course, it's very, very avoidable. I could have just ulted him. I could have just avoided that paralyzing jutsu. But I'm just really trying to show you guys uh, what are the best case scenarios. So yeah, that's Shikamaru's room. That's how I have him set up right there. You could use other units for this type of center. You could probably use Kabuto. Yeah, I explained that a lot earlier. And he taught your version 1. Something like that. Someone who, someone who likes to move around a lot. But also someone who... Um, works the best without having a lot of space. So I'm gonna talk about my next setup right here. I showed you guys this earlier, and I usually use this for OG Naruto. Other people who could use for this room would be Sarada, Itachi version 1. Once again, people who really don't require a lot of space. Even Kabuto would work in this room. Um, the way I have this set up is very, very simple. This Naruto is a one-shot. I have two bear traps set up right here. Uh, exactly where uh, they can spawn Naruto the nearest. So, if they get stuck in this bear trap right here, Naruto does his Shadow Clone Jutsu, they're dead. That's it. Game over. It's most likely a one-shot, especially with this pot right here. It gives him a uh, power. The seal right here is just because if, um, the enemy team got tornado trapped and they kill the enemy in this room and that room and they come in here i want them to get sealed so that's why i have it there you have to think about all the entries and things like that so set it up carefully this is just for this room specifically so for uh, og naruto the best type of room is uh something like this because it has narrow parts but also wider parts in naruto requires a little bit of narrowness that's the easiest way to get caught into his shadow clone jutsu but i also love the, um, the width of the room because he does have a paralyzing move so if you get caught in that it's just perfect so i'll go into that room and show you guys how that all plays out all right i made it to the room where og naruto resides and remember i have two bear traps set up right here so that when i enter that naruto will spawn and that is the furthest area that will spawn naruto so i got trapped and naruto's right there i got stunned and there you go, Shadow Clone Jutsu. Now, of course, I am with Hokage Naruto, which means he has a lot of defense. So it's a two shot instead of a one shot. But I'm gonna go in with another unit just to show you guys really what would go down if you're not with it's such a high defensive unit. So I'm with Oji Naruto. The reason why I'm with him is because he has much, much lower defense than Hokage Naruto. He's still a main. Now, I'll show you guys what would happen if he got caught in that bear trap right there. So Naruto stuns me right, and he does the Shadow Clone Jutsu, and I'm done for. That's the purpose. I need him to one-shot. So other people that could do this would probably be Itachi, maybe Sarada. So that's why I like that. It's for one-shot characters. That's the type of setup I love for one-shot characters. So that kind of explains it set and done. It's very, very simple. I really like that setup for that OG Naruto. Now, I'm going to talk about this room. This is a room that has more space than the one for the setup for OG Naruto. And this is for someone like Hokage Naruto that has more of an AoE power attack. This is for a room like Shisui. This is a room for even Itachi for teleport characters, for more wide range characters. Um, yeah, those are the units that come to him. Sasori would be a good candidate for this place, even the first room. So Sasori for this room and that room. Um, and this room. Those are the ones I recommend in this room, this type of setup. So this trap right here will take care of the, um, the seal scrolls and a lot of things. I have a pot right here to increase the strength of the base defender. And I will show you guys how that all plays out. Now the reason I have this room set up the way it is, is for one reason. Uh, when the team gets separated, usually they end up landing right here. Which means they cannot access the trap that's over here. And they will just get basically messed up, you know? They will get trapped, they can't reach it because they would have to go through my Naruto first. And yeah, that's why I have the trap right here. Now, if you decide to use this trap, please do not put it in a room where the enemy team can just go around and catch it. Like, do not put that trap there, please. This trap is too good for it to be used that way. Use it in a room where they must go through your base defender first in order to access it. That's the surefire way to use that trap. All right, so I arrived to that room and I'll show you guys what exactly would happen if someone tries to fight this room and they're alone. So they would go in, they maybe would try to fight Naruto and then they would get trapped. That trap really takes care of a lot of things. He will keep knocking you back up and down. You will get knocked down a lot. And until you really have to... <laughs> oh my God. 
yeah. The war the only thing you could really do is use its ultimate to escape this. Like Hokage Naruto is amazing at knocking enemies back down. That's why I love putting him in this room. He's such an annoying base defender. And he deals really, really good damage. I was with someone who has a lot of defense. Think about that. Really, really think about that. And not only that, like, worst case scenario, I would have used my ult, and he would have had an iframe. So that, that room is just self-explanatory, right? Let's go in with someone like OG Naruto, who has a much lower defense, and the, the result will be even quicker. All right, so I got Tornado Trap from my first roommate, and this is what I would get confused. I wouldn't know which way to go. That's why I love that trap, and then basically I'm dead. Exactly, so that's why that trap is amazing. You cannot do anything. You get confused, you get sealed, you don't have any chakra, and it's just beautiful. That, that room is very, very self-explanatory. It's the most OP room imaginable, especially if you put Hokage and Archer or Shisui. Those two deadly y'all deadly 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 that room will surely cause tears to your enemy team now i'm gonna talk about this room right here the revival porter and who i use here the revival port is a really 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 awesome addition to the game it allows you to have five base defenders but it also has an additional twist the other shinobi gets revived it's just beautiful it's absolutely beautiful now, the way I have this set up is for Shisui. Shisui doesn't really, really require any traps to be surrounded with him because he has evasion, he has to teleport. It's very, very, very hard to hit him. But I do have these two mirages right here so you don't have to see, so you don't get to see him. And the reason why is that once he's invisible, you don't know where he is. He's super fast and he will hit you. I have a seal so you can't use your jutsu. And the reason why I have the slugs here is for healing because Shisui is a hard character to kill either way. And if they have the slugs healing him in the back, it's very, very hard to, uh, it's very, very hard to kill him. And now another thing is that once he gets revived again, the same thing happens again, except when the enemy gets revived with this port, um, they get an additional evasion. So it's, I'll just show you guys exactly why I have it set up that way. And I'm going in with Hokage Naruto first. All right, so I made it into this room um, and I'll show you guys what would happen. I would walk, I'm gonna try to defeat the slugs first but I don't really get to see them. And this is what exactly what I was talking about. Shisui is right there doing his thing. I don't see him again. He's teleporting, I don't know what to do. What I could do is of course use my ultimate, which is great, but I didn't hit him because he has evasion. And of course, Naruto's ultimate launches. So that that's just one, like, yeah, th this, this is deadly. This is really, really deadly. Now, of course, if I was trying hard enough, I could have killed him. There's no such thing as an undefeatable base defender, or undefeatable room, but that's just like a best case scenario. Of course, there's a way to counter it. Um, you could use your ultimate, of course. Uh, I didn't use it at the correct time, so that's, of course, my fault. But yeah, really, that, that room is set and done. Shisui works the best with open rooms uh, because he is a teleport and speed up character. It's just self-explanatory and so on and so on. And those slugs really do come in handy because Shisui... It's so fast, you don't know who to hit, you don't know what to do, and, you know, let's just give that room another try. And, um, yeah, that, that's basically, I'm gonna show you guys what it does when he revives, because I really want you guys to see that. So, Shisui is right here. Uh, this ultimate might not hit him. It did, it did kill him. So, what would happen, I'll try to hit the slugs, kill them off. Shisui is right there. He is sped up. I don't have my ultimate. I'm trying to kill him. And yeah, that's it. You're having a real difficult time because he has a high evasion. So I did, a, I was able to kill him. It's not undefeatable, but you also have to manage. Uh, you also have to imagine the fact that someone doesn't know where all the traps are, etc., etc. They will have a much, much harder time. <clears throat> so I have talked about the room for a teleport slash speed up character. I've talked about everything else. Now it's time to talk about someone like Madara. So this is a room that's set up for people like Madara, EMS Sasuke. Uh, the new Naruto, the KCM Naruto, people who can hit over the walls. This is the perfect situation for them. You want to put them in the hallway with a lot of bar uh, barrier traps, bear traps, seals, so they can hit you through the walls. And it's deadly. I'll show you guys exactly how that happens. So I'm going to be with someone. Uh, I'm going to be with uh, Hokage Naruto. And I'm going to not use my Jutsu to hit the barriers uh, because his uh, Shadow Clone Jutsu will just activate everything and that's not a good uh, showcase, really. Alright, so I made it into this room. Let's pretend I do not have Shadow Clone Jutsu. I'll just use Jutsu that do not hit through all of the traps. 
this is what usually would happen. I got hit by his damage over time. Um, yeah, I have another barrier to go through. I have this pot right here that gives him more power. And the good thing about Madara is that he has basically, like, a lot of counters. So this is what happens. Now, he did do a lot of damage to me, but I was able to destroy him in the end. And because he's a damage over time unit and I wouldn't have my healer, I end up near death. And when I get into my final room, well, good luck with that because I will most likely end up dying. So that's why it's really, really vital to put someone like Mother over there that has either damage over time, uh, can hit through walls, etc, etc. So even though I was able to defeat him, look how much damage he dealt with me and I have a full health bar. So that, that explains a lot. And of course, um, I was playing like a person who doesn't know where all the traps are. I was trying my best. I was trying my best to do that. And yeah, it worked out pretty well. So I'm purposely playing bad here, but this is a setup for real. Like, you guys saw that. Um, so yeah, that covers the base defenders. I covered who to use in these type of rooms. And let's just hop right into the final room slash final room area. All right, y'all, we have finally made it to the final room area. And this is really like the finishing touches of a base. And of course the final room itself, I explained this. Of course I'll explain that a little later, like who to use, etc., etc. So the final room, it's very self-explanatory really. What you want your enemy to do is just to get blown away. You want them to get blown away so they cannot reach your final room, but there's only so many limited uh, ways to do that. You really want them to encounter uh, your tornado traps. So you could do it something like this. I, the reason I have a barrier there is for teleport characters so they will get stopped and get blown away. But you could also do something a little bit like this. So like to make it foolproof that you put some, uh, let's say like you put two right here or one right here so they won't get, uh, so they'll get blown away. Etc. So there's really only so many limited things to do. You have to use your tornado traps, things like that, if that's the setup you want. But I have another solution for you. And this is the moment I was so excited to share because this is such a game changer and I left the best thing for last. Like this is ridiculously OP and so annoying and so, so good. It's a final room setup and I'll show you guys very, very shortly. I'm gonna hop over to my brother's phone because he has that base set up the way around that room specifically because you have to have a specific room for that. I'll show you guys that all soon. So of course the final room, tornado traps, very self-explanatory. Place them wherever you feel like placing them, depending on your room, depending on whatever you feel like. So the final room is really just get them blown away or the other solution I'm about to show you. All right, so I have stolen my big brother's phone and this is his base. And the only focus I really have here is the final room. Now, this doesn't look like much, but I will show you guys what exactly this does. And y'all, it is really, really 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 good like this is a game changer and not a lot of people use it and maybe this video will change that so um we'll just see now the way that his base is set up is like this so he has sorcery right here he has naruto right here he has kabuto right here and then you after this room you have no choice but to go into this room and i'll show you guys what this will do and it is really really annoying and i'll explain it better once i'm at that room anyway so i'm gonna de-equip the sorcery Naruto and Kabuto so that I just don't have to deal with that and I can just go right to that room All right, I'll see you guys right there. So let's just pretend I have defeated Naruto, Kabuto and Sasori um, I probably wouldn't be in this great of a shape or form with my health, but This is where things get really really interesting. Let's say I want to go in to fight Sarada and This is what happens Did, did you guys see that? Did, did you guys see that? Or do you guys want to replay that? Holy All right, so I made it to that room. Let's pretend I want to go and fight Sarada. So I'm gonna go towards. Never mind. You guys can basically figure out what this exactly does. Um, it's it's OP because y'all, that's. That's a problem right there. A very, 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 very big problem. Now, if you guys aren't catching on what exactly that does, is the way his base is set up is that this final room is in a place where you have to go there to defeat the last, um, the last Shinobi, and you would have to go there to defeat Itachi. But if I want to go and fight Sarada before everyone's defeated in the base, these traps right here will just pull me in. 
they will pull me in into a room into the fine room that hasn't had the barrier removed yet and then the fish things just push you in yo this is ridiculously good this is an amazing setup and there is a way around it i'm not exactly going to share that because um and of course there's a way around it um i'm not really going to share that just for um winning purposes but you guys can probably figure that out but for someone who doesn't know about this and for someone who's just going in there like blindfolded they will be like what the heck just happened y'all like that is ridiculously good i'll show you guys that once again like imagine you would have to go through his base defenders first like naruto kabuto etc like your health will be like maybe like 3,000 at best you get pushed in there and you're dead in a second like i'll do that again and i'll just show you guys why that is so good like wow all right so i made it back to the final room and even if i want to avoid it like that um that thing will still push me in like yeah like it still pushes you in regardless so it's fantastic and i'm dead that's it it's amazing i love that idea um it took my brother and i a few tries to figure that out um i've even seen that a few bases have that before um so yeah this isn't exactly an original idea i guess i've seen it before but for you y'all this is a really really great way to do your final room i love it but you have to have the right room for it so the one that's in my base it doesn't work for it but i didn't decide to make the switch just yet because I am a tier 1 chonin and I'm trying to lose scrolls, so I don't care what my base is as of now. This is for the people who need a good base. So yeah, y'all, that final room right here, this is deadly. You guys just saw that. You guys just saw everything that it does. I don't even need to explain. So I'm going to hop back into my to my account and I'll show you guys the final room, like who to use, etc, etc. And then, yeah, y'all. Alright, so we made it to the final, final room. And there is really no secret to this, y'all. The only secret is to use characters that have a lot of iframes. That's it. Because they will dodge ultimates. You do not want to kill them off easily. Um, etc, etc. That's really the only secret. So I have Neji, Gara, Itachi version 2, EMS Sasuke, even the new Naruto, Hokage Naruto, Shisui. Those type of characters work really, really well in the final room. That's all you really, really need. Uh, Shisui is the best final room unit because... Um, once he uses his teleporter, he adds evasion to everyone and they just like dodge things left and right So there's that's really it. That's the only secret. You do not want to um, have your base be um, You don't want you do not want your enemy to be able to just kill everyone immediately So that's why it's important to use people with iframes like Gara. Neji has the seal with the everything like that So that's very self-explanatory. That's why I did not even make a dedicated video on the top 10 final room characters because it's just so self-explanatory. Use people with iframes. That's it. So I decided to make this video instead. And I hope you guys really, really, really enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned stuff. I hope you guys learned how to build a great base. I hope you guys appreciated the effort I put this in. And I really, really hope that you guys enjoyed it for real. Like, if you really enjoyed it, y'all, please hit a big thumbs up. Comment down below. Comment down below what do you guys think about that special uh, setup for the final room that I showed just previously. Like, tell me for real how you guys feel about that down below. So, yeah, y'all, I think I'm going to leave this video off like that. Um, once again, I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit a big thumbs up once again. And if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button. And if you are already subscribed, hit that notification bell so that you will always be notified when I upload. And yeah, that was it, y'all. See you all in my next video. Oxivo is out.